Hey everybody, so making designs for the laser cutter is not actually that difficult. All you need to do is learn how to work with flat designs, but the laser cutter can be a little bit complicated because you have to use different sorts of data to tell it what it's going to use as a raster, which is just kind of scratching across the surface with your image and where it's going to do a cut, which defines the path that it's going to follow as it does a more intense beam of, of laser to cut things. And so it, you're going to have to learn just a little bit, but honestly, it's not that difficult. And there are many programs that you can use to create what we call vector graphics. Vector graphics are the ones that decide the path that it's going to follow. Now, Adobe Illustrator is perhaps the biggest and best known program for making vector graphics, but it's expensive and professional to do that. Inkscape, on the other hand, is a free program, and it's still very powerful and very easy to use. In fact, I find that it's easier to do certain things in Inkscape that I can't even get Adobe Illustrator to do very well, like Boolean commands, but we'll get to those in just a little bit. So let's jump over, take a look at Inkscape, and then we'll discuss it a bit further in the program. So now we're looking at Inkscape here, and I've got here two smiley faces. And looking at these two smiley faces, you might think, yeah, they're, they're, they're identical, right? But they illustrate the difference between vector and raster graphics. Now, you can't tell at this level, but if we zoom in, you might start seeing a difference between them. Notice how the edge of this one on the right looks kind of pixely, we'll say. The, the edges aren't quite sharp, but even more than that, as they get closer, every square is defined by a block of color, and each one of these blocks is assigned a different color. Now, adjacent blocks may be only slightly different, and that creates the illusion of a smooth line when you zoom out from it, but it's still, it's stored as, well, we call these pixels, pixels right next to each other with all of the information that you need. Now, raster graphics are a fantastic way to store picture data. You're looking at a raster image in motion right now because it really is not a productive way for the computer to, every time it takes a look at your face and, and snaps a picture, says, hold on for a second, I got to figure out what the shape of this face is, and we need to get really, really close because we want to make sure to get all that detail. You'll notice that these vector graphics, they keep their edge constantly. That's because they're not defined by pixels. What they're defined by, if I click on them, is a set of points. And these points define here where the line is going to go after that point. So there's kind of three ideas that you need to understand for vector graphics. They are points, lines, and handles. I've got another illustration down here that explains it. This is a single line. And this line is created with two points, but notice how one of these points handles goes off in this direction and the other handle goes off in this direction and the line between them tries to make them, well, it doesn't try, it successfully kind of goes between those two and creates this very interesting shape. Now, it might be a simpler shape that we're making. It doesn't need to twist in three directions. In fact, it might even be if we set it up like this and use our straight line function here, boom, just a straight line between them. And no matter where you try and define these, it's just going to be a straight line between them. But it's interesting to me, I think, that they're capable of doing such beautifully, and if you really push it, complex curves with just two points and some extreme handles between them. Now, when we take a number of points and lines and join them together, they can make longer and more complex surfaces. And when we bring them all back together to create a big loop, then we get a shape. And shapes add two new concepts that we need to talk about. That is stroke and fill. Now this particular shape right here has a black stroke of a thin line and a green fill. For laser cutting, that is not going to play into the way that it does the laser cutting, 
but it will take the image as you see it and attempt to display it on the raster side of things. So it will kind of take this this vector image that you've created and treat it like a raster and try and display it like a raster, which can actually be very useful. However, there can be some gotchas on this one. Take a look at this line. This line has over here in the, the stroke style here, I've given this line a dash. So while it is just like the other one, a line that's defined by two handles, let me move these handles around to show, between those handles there are dashes and you might think what i want it to do is i want the laser cutter to go zip 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 and and do a dotted uh perforated cut well, it's not going to do that because to the laser cutter this line is still defined along this path that's connecting these two so it's not defined by the dotted line same way as this line this line's got a different dot and it's not going to be like zip 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 no it's going to be a continuous cut and even if I try and do something clever like oh well, I want to have arrow points on the end of my line so as it's doing the cut it no what you need to do is you need to change this you cannot do a line like this but fortunately Inkscape has some tools so let's let's work with this arrow one here I'm going to take the arrow and up in the up in the menu here I'm going to under path. First of all, I'm going to change the stroke to path. Let's see if that does what I want it to. Yep, that did what I want it to. So it turned this shape right here. I'm going to change the outline of it. If you hold down shift while clicking the colors, that changes the outline. Its outline goes around here. This shape, its outline goes, let's thin that outline out. That might be hard to see with it being so thick. Its outline goes around the outside of it. And then this one back here, it, it created three different shapes with the outlines around them, but they are now shapes. Now, it doesn't matter how thick also that we make this line. The laser is just gonna follow down the middle of that. The thickness of that line is just for you so that you can see it. So we could make that 0.4, which is actually much more accurate to how big it's going to try to cut it. If you set to a 0.4 millimeter stroke, that's pretty much what the laser is, is going to cut because the laser is about 0.4 millimeters thick. So now if we cut this, yes, it'll try cutting these all together, but it's gonna cut, yeah, you might've noticed, it's gonna cut inside here and it's gonna cut over the top here. And in fact, it's going to cut right through this because this shape continues here here I'm going to try and move it to the top oops not like that how do we how do we move to the top let's see object if you if you don't know how to do it it's always in the menus there we go raise to top home button next time yeah it's going to try cutting across the top here and then it's going to cut across the bottom here this is a mess this is a mess but we'll clean this up later let's go back up to our dotted line here we want this to go zip 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 and do a dotted line fine we'll turn our stroke to a path and now let's draw our path on here and make it a 0.4. Now it will just kind of, oh, <laughs> do you see what it did? It, uh, it made the individual dotted lines dash because I started with a dash. Let's turn those back into solid. There we go. So there we go. It's turning it into a what it's actually going to do is it's going to cut around the edge of this one and around the edge of that one but it's going to do it very quickly because it's a very small space and so i've seen this effect it's totally cool it goes zip 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 and it cuts holes right through perforates it just the way you're looking for so if you leave it as a line with a dash on it you're not going to get the effect that you want now I want to talk very quickly about creating Boolean shapes. I said this one's going to be a mess because uh, the head is different and the tail is different. And yeah, that's going to just plain be a mess. But it's also, you'll notice, it's still one object. If I click on it, it's one object. But we can break this apart into different objects by simply uh, going to the object and ungrouping it. Now it's three separate objects and I can move them around separately. And in fact, I'm going to move the head of it just a little bit there and the tail of it just a little bit there. Now, what we want to do is we want to combine these into one shape. So it just traces around the outside, assuming that we want this arrow shape. This is a terrible arrow shape, but nevertheless, what we can do is select two of the shapes, 
and up in the path menu, go to a union. Notice how I think the, the, it does a great job of illustrating uh, what we're looking for here. The union takes two shapes and puts them together. The difference takes one shape and subtracts the other shape out of it. Intersection is where those two shapes overlap and it gets rid of everything else. Exclusion is everything else except for where those two <laughs> intersect. Uh, so it's, it's very cool. Union, boom, put them together. And now if we look at the path for the object, it comes in here and goes out there and there's nothing in between. This is what we wanted. But the head's still separate, so let's grab that boolean it here, union them. You might have noticed that I'm using two different pointer tools. I'm using this pointer tool to grab the object, and I'm using this pointer tool to manipulate the endpoints and lines and handles for the individual line. And that's the that's the way Inkscape works. You've got one arrow pointer up here for grabbing the object and moving it around. And you've got another one for, well, now it automatically switched me to the other one, but now I can move the object and now I can click this and I can manipulate the individual elements of the shape. Now, the next function about Inkscape I want to show you guys is, is the trace function. So here's a, here's a handsome picture of a dude with a very happy to have his first 3D printer right there. There's an old picture of me. You can actually take Inkscape and tell it to turn this, because th this, of course, is raster, okay, pixels all over the place, but you can tell it to try and make this into a vector. And let me show you how to do this. You go up to Path and you say Trace Bitmap. And this Trace Bitmap menu comes up. Now, there's lots of ways to do this. I'm going to live preview, and apparently I have to reselect this. So brightness cutoff says anything that's above a certain brightness, we're going to include in our trace and anything that's below it, we're gonna just get rid of it. For a color image like this, this isn't the best choice, but if you were simply like tracing a logo, this would be a great way to say, okay, I want, I want part of this logo and I want to just kind of trace the edges of it. But remember, just like our smiley face here, there's grays in between. And this is how you tell the computer at what point we stop tracing the grays. But that's not going to work for us. Edge detection is, uh, well, it's interesting, but we're not going to worry about that. Color quantization, I'm not really sure what that is. So let's go on down here to multiple scans. It creates a group of paths. We can do it by brightness steps. That's okay. We can do it by colors. Ah, that's better. It looks like it's it's colors. In fact, we could even do it by grayscales. But we'll do colors this time. But this this result, uh, you'd have to look at it really closely. But it doesn't look really good. Here, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. And there's the result of it. You might notice that uh, it didn't it didn't it kind of worked. Well, if you want it to work even better. Let's go back to this and let's increase the number of colors. It, it did eight colors, but this has got a lot of color in it. So let's, let's up that to maybe 20 colors and let's go for it. And there we go. That's a, that's a much, it's still a little bit weird looking, but that's a much better representation. Now I'm just going to close this down for one second, but now they're vectors, I can go in and I can see where the individual vector paths are. And if I wanted to, I could cut along those vector paths. Now this is not something that I would want to do, not this example. I'll show you a better example in just one second. But this might be a way if you've got an image that you're trying to extract something out of, because what you can do is come up to your object, ungroup it, and now each of those individual layers are now separate. And I can take a look at each one of them separately and say, well, that one, that one's kind of got what I'm looking for. That one's maybe a bit more if I make this one black and this one black so that I can compare apples to apples here. Yeah, that one I can see more of my thumb, so I like that one better. And just kind of scrub through these layers and see which one has, has the shape that you want. It's a very cool way. I kind of like that last one, actually. This one right here. I don't know why. It's just interesting. Yeah, it's, it's possible to, well, not a whole lot there, so there we go. Scrub through these layers and find the one that best matches what you want. 
Uh, I did make 20 of them. <laughs> so there we go. And we'll get rid of that. And we'll get rid of that. But let me show you a better use case for it. Let's go back to our smiley face here. Remember this smiley face is raster graphics, but we want it to be vectors because we want it to cut around the edge of it or something like that. So I will go path. I will go trace bitmap. I will say, you know what? I really don't need actually more than two colors. So I'll go up to four with it. And I'll tell you why in just a little bit. Maybe I'll take that up to eight. Okay. Let's do our trace on it. You can hardly tell the difference between these, but I think it's interesting that the edge went from being solid black to kind of being grayscale because of the nature of it. But okay, we're looking for, we don't want all eight of these paths. We want it to be clean. Otherwise it'll try cutting over those lines like eight times. So let's ungroup this and let's start pulling it apart. Does that one have the shape that we want? Well, uh, kind of, maybe not so much. Let's try a different one. That one definitely is not it. Ah, that one's got more of it, but it's not quite right. That one's, that one's looking pretty good. That one's looking even better. That one's looking fantastic. Shoot, these are all good. I'm going to grab the gray one because I think it's got the thickest line. But, in fact, we don't even need that raster anymore, so we'll just put him back away over here. But there is a problem with this. Well, it might not be a problem, but in this case it is. Notice that the line on the outside here isn't a single straight line. It's an outside edge and an inside edge. And that might not be what we want. Let's pretend in this case that it's not. So what do we do about that? Well, real simple. We can go in and, and this is a fairly, they did a good job of, of making it fairly simple. I'm just going to grab these vertices on the inside, just on the inside here, and I'm just going to delete them one at a time to get rid of it. Now, if it's too complex, you can simplify the mesh. There's a tool under path here for simplify, and it will try and reduce the number of points in there, and that oftentimes works extremely well. All right, we're just down to one inside dot. There we go. And now, now we've still got the lines on the inside here, but um, let's say, for instance, that that, oops, that that is the cut that we want. There we go. Simplified it down. You can edit these points manually by hand and successfully, fairly easily. So that that I think shows. And there we go. I'm ready to make a nice little stencil happy face uh, cut out of it. So there we go. I hope that that helps you guys. Now, one last word about the colors that you choose for the lines when you do your cuts. See, a lot of times when you look at a laser cut design, you might think, well, why aren't the lines that are supposed to be a cut black? They, I, I, I want them to cut. Black means cut. But with laser cutters, they're oftentimes red or pink or yellow or some light color. Well, remember I said that the laser cutter is going to attempt to take your design as it looks and raster it. And sometimes that's what you want. You'll put fill in there and you'll say, I want to raster this, but then afterwards I want to cut around this. Well, if the line that you're trying to cut along is black, it's going to raster that line no matter what you do. But if it's a lighter color, you can filter that one out by using a black white threshold to say, okay, you take a look at this and it's all colorful, but this is a lighter line. So don't raster out the lighter line. Use that for a cut. They also oftentimes have multiple colors for multiple cuts because you want to control your laser cutter and say, cut the inside stuff first so that when that stuff falls out, it doesn't shift and then cut the outside so that it falls out and then cut the outermost that way. So different colors allows you to control the order of the cut. It's, it's really a little bit of an art, but hopefully I've given you enough of the skills. You can download and play with Inkscape and get a little bit good at it so that you can make your own designs for the laser cutter and start using the laser cutter on a regular basis. Well, I want to thank you very much for watching. And if you have any other questions, I hope to see you at the Makerspace and I'll help you through. See ya.